Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American superhero comedy film called Zoom. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. 30 years ago, a team of five superheroes called the Zenith fought interstellar criminals and saved the Earth. The team leader was a superhero named Zoom. He was an ordinary man before being recruited by the US government for a special program. He had the ability to run faster than the Flash. The team also consisted of Zoom's elder brother Concussion, who was just as good as him. When the Earth was at risk of being invaded, the American military, led by General Larrabee, sought to enhance the team's powers using an experimental form of radiation called Gamma-13. The group was blasted with the ray, which made Zoom faster and stronger, but created a psychotic break in concussion. It made him angry, unreasonable, and evil. Believing that Zoom and the team betrayed him, Concussion killed three of his teammates. In the end, Zoom defeated him and threw him into an interdimensional portal, never to return. However, over the years after that, Zoom lost his powers slowly and returned to his old life as Jack, a mechanic living in California. Now, after 30 years, a scientist on the Zenith Project, Dr. Grant, finds out that Concussion, who had entered a dimensional rift, is on a return trajectory. He has not died or even aged because of his speed through space-time. The scientists have all reasons to believe that he is just as powerful and is returning to take revenge on his brother. However, Zoom has become accustomed to his life as Jack and has long since lost his powers. Because of this, General Larrabee wants to recruit children with special powers and train them to fight concussion when he returns. However, they only have 12 days to do so before his arrival. The only person fit to train the special children is Zoom himself. The General is sure that he will not cooperate, so he orders Grant to bring him to the base one way or another. Then, we see the former superhero Captain Zoom for the first time. Since being retired, he is known simply as Jack. He uses whatever power he has left to froth his coffee with his fingers. Grant and a psychologist on the Zenith Project, Dr. Marsha, come to recruit Jack for the mission. Jack thinks the idea is crazy because they do not need another set of superheroes. Sensing that he doesn't want to be a part of the mission, Grant shoots him with a tranquilizer gun and knocks him out. The General and Grant have decided to keep the return of Concussion a secret from Jack because they believe it will make him emotional and fog his critical thinking. Then, we are introduced to the youngest member of the team of superheroes who are yet to be recruited. She is a six-year-old girl named Cindy who has superhuman strength. She can pick up and throw a grown person with no effort. Cindy has been using her power to fight bullies but now wants to audition to be in the superhero team. Next is a 16-year-old high schooler named Summer. She has the power of psychokinesis and can move a person or an object using just her mind. She can also read people's minds to some extent. Because Summer is always alone at school, she is considered an outcast by many. Hence, to try to fit in, she wants to audition for the superhero team. Then, there is 17-year-old Dylan, who can become invisible at will. He uses the power to outsmart his teachers but always gets in trouble. Lastly, 12-year-old Tucker has the most unique power. He can blow up the size of any part of his body and make himself giant. In the training base, Jack gains consciousness and is told that he will be given half a million dollars if he agrees to train the newbies. But if he declines, he will be sent to prison under a false accusation. Jack accepts the offer, but he still insists that the world doesn't need superheroes anymore. Following that, he officially meets Dr. Marsha, who is his biggest fan. She collects the first edition of all Zenith comics and is obsessed with Zoom. Jack sees the candidates for the next team of superheroes and is shocked that they are all kids. He jokingly asks if they're auditioning for the Spelling Bee, but Grant claims that all the kids who are participating have been given unique powers at birth. According to Dr. Marsha, they will have to naturally enhance the children's power because the risk with Gamma 13 is too high. The kids show their special talent. Some blink too fast, while others are farting machines. By the end of the day, Cindy, Summer, Dylan, and Tucker are selected to be trained. Meanwhile, Concussion will be on Earth in nine more days. The General and Grant are delighted that they were able to recruit the best children in such a short period, but they are skeptical as to whether Jack will be able to train them in time. The General is ready to dose the kids with Gamma 13 without considering the effect it will have on their health. 
At first, the recruited children do not take Jack seriously and think that he is just a random old dude. But then, Dr. Marsha gives them a lesson on the history of Team Zenith and reveals that Jack is actually Captain Zoom. The youngest two kids start to look up to him, but the oldest, Dylan, is still skeptical. The scientists, including Jack, check the extent of the children's powers by making them use their respective abilities. Cindy is always dressed in pretty pink dresses, even while carrying tons of weight. Jack finds her annoying, but the little girl talks to him every chance she gets. Dylan, on the other hand, is the most troublesome of them all. He disappears while they try to evaluate his powers. The facility develops a new alert called Code Dylan just to catch him. One day, after evaluation, Jack asks Dr. Marsha what they're training the kids for, but she dismisses him. The truth is that even she doesn't know about Concussion's return. In a meeting with the general and other officials from the military, she presents the results of their last few evaluations. It is revealed that the children are capable of channeling an unfathomable amount of energy, but currently they are subconsciously suppressing their full abilities. Jack tries to enter the meeting, but is escorted out by security. The following day, Grant takes the kids and Jack to a lab where they meet Mr. Peb, an AI robot that was built to keep Team Zenith company. With Peb's help, Jack takes the children to a room where their old space saucer is kept. He secretly loads the kids up in the flying vehicle and takes them out for a ride. They fly to Wendy's drive through and get themselves lunch. Everything goes well, but the event makes the news and people start to believe that the Earth is being invaded by ice cream eating aliens. The scientists at the base find out about Jack's little trip, but they can take no action against Captain Zoom himself. That night, Jack is woken up by little Cindy in a rabbit costume. She had a bad dream and wants to sleep in Jack's room for the rest of the night. He feels bad for the little girl and allows her to sleep on the couch, bolted to the wall. Cindy thanks him and pulls the couch out with little to no effort. The following day, the scientists put the kids in a room filled with hundreds of paintball launchers to train them to dodge bullets. After that, they train on treadmills and use their powers on a one-on-one -on -one session with Jack. Although they are getting better at using their specific strengths, they still have a lot to improve on. By the end of the day, they are covered in paint and bruises and are exhausted. Dylan comments that no one in the camp cares about them and Jack is only using them for money. When Cindy asks him if that is true, he neither confirms nor denies the claim. Later, Jack goes to meet Dylan in a cell where he is being kept for trying to escape. He tells Dylan how he was recruited at a young age and was made to train with his brother. Dylan realizes that Concussion, who he knows from the comics, is also a real person and is none other than Jack's older brother. Jack is visibly uncomfortable talking about him, so he asks Grant to let them both out of the cell. In the next one-on-one -on -one session with Dylan, Jack realizes that he may have an additional special power. He asks Dylan to close his eyes and visualize where Summer is right now. As the boy focuses, he can see her dancing in her room. It turns out that the power is called Super Stalker, I mean Mind Sight, and is the rarest power a human being can have. Jack praises Dylan for channeling it at such a young age and declares him the leader of the team. Later, we see Jack and Dr. Marsha talking together about the training. Jack compliments her hard work, which makes her blush. She has always liked and idolized him, which he thinks is adorable. In the next scene, Grant and the General are at the location where the portal to another dimension lies. They assume that Concussion is going to emerge in this location and hence make their soldiers guard the place. Grant plans to use the kids as a distraction and utilize a sonic net to catch Concussion. The net will force him to concuss and hence will turn him back to normal in an instant. When only 48 hours are left until his arrival, Jack throws a party for the kids since they have worked hard for the past few days. Dylan and Summer dance together while the others watch them. Soon, Marsha and Jack also join them. However, their fun is ruined when Grant interrupts and orders them to shut down the party immediately. Jack sees the soldiers bringing in equipment for the Gamma 13 inducing process. He registers that they are about to hurt the kids like they hurt his team 30 years ago. He retaliates to the general, but the man is adamant about his decision. At midnight, Jack goes up to the children's room and wakes them up. He plans to secretly make them run away before the general can hurt them. They are brought to an electric vent, which leads to a secret room. There, the kids finally get their superhero names. Dylan is Mega Boy, Summer is Wonder, Tucker is Houdini, and Cindy is Princess. 
Suddenly, Dylan gets a vision from the other room. He learns that the real mission that officials are working on is to eliminate concussion when he returns to the Earth. When Jack finds out that his brother is alive, he almost doesn't believe him. After asking the kids to remain safe, he runs to find out the truth. The general confirms that Concussion is in fact alive and will be back in less than two hours. Jack insists that the kids will never be able to go up against Concussion and urges the general to abort the mission. But he is locked in a cell so that the project will run smoothly. Somewhere else, Marsha has found the kids and is bringing them to Grant. On her way, she blows the guards away with her rainbow breath, revealing that she also has superpowers. Then, the group gets Jack out of the cell and flies away in the space saucer. At the same time, the dimensional portal opens and Concussion is about to land on Earth. The saucer reaches the location. Jack asks the kids to stay inside and goes out to meet his brother. They come face to face and almost do not recognize each other. Concussion hasn't aged a day since they last met, while Jack has become old and weak. He tries to calm his evil brother down, but Concussion pushes him with an extraordinary force and sends him flying. Then, the kids, who have now completely turned into superheroes, arrive at the scene only to be made fun of by Concussion. When he is distracted, the general launches the web that is supposed to catch him, but Concussion easily diverts its direction towards Cindy. As she is about to get hit, Jack regains his powers and saves her in a second. Following that, he runs to the lab, puts on his protective gear, and returns to the location, all in less than five seconds. The Zenith team is told that if Concussion is placed in the middle of the web that was thrown earlier, there is a high chance he will turn back to his normal self. Dylan uses his power to distract Concussion, while Summer launches several rocks at him. Then, Tucker, using his bloated stomach, throws him into the air, and Cindy hits him with a pole. At last, Marsha uses her breath to push him into the web. In only a few seconds, Concussion returns back to his normal self and stops being aggressive. Zoom asks Dr. Grant to come with them and forms a new Zenith team consisting of himself, Marsha, Dr. Grant, Concussion, Dylan, Summer, Tucker, and Cindy. In the final scene, we see them flying away in a saucer. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.